Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you my very first ever Nightmare Room book versus episode video. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Locker 13, book versus the episode, which I don't have an image of, uh, or I do have an image of, but I don't have physical media of, so I'll be putting the image I made right here. I gave the book a 4.6 out of 5. I think this is an excellent book, a lot of good going for it, and I gave the episode a 3.2 out of 5. So... I think everyone knows exactly where I'm going with this, but like in book versus episode videos, you'll be often surprised where I think even the clear, the clear fights like this have some battles going on. In the book versus episode videos, I like to look at some things that um, you can compare with the actual book and the episode in question. For this specific video, this is more like an in-name-only adaptation episode comparing it to the book. So there's a lot of changes. There's different characters involved, different motives. There's obvious aesthetics, too. Uh, we're getting into that as well. Um, yeah, so we're plot and all that. So what I like to run down is the characters. I like to run down the atmosphere slash setting. I like to run down the overall plot. If there's different aesthetics, like in this book, there are some different aesthetics, kind of like with the charm, like like a plastic Dollar Tree charm in the episode, and then you have like a yellow skull that can kind of like grow in size in the book. Then you have the climax, and then the overall ending, right? So, let's get into this, because this... This one's going to be kind of hard because there's so many so many differences. It's it's an in-name only ad episode adaptation versus the book here. So I guess let's get into characters. Luke. In both in both other way, Luke is this person kind of involved with superstition. In the book, he has bad luck at first, and then he gains good luck by kind of being cursed with with good luck that turns to bad luck. You know what I mean? As in the episode, he kind of stumbles across good luck and then he has to pay with like life force and then if he wants to live he's gonna have to give this charm to somebody else so he can free himself from the curse of the fate master it's a little bit different um i think comparing them i think the episode is a way more shallower way to handle the story to streamline it I do kind of dig the energy consumption angle where he can just simply free himself by giving it away. But what I think kind of mirrors the book is the moral behind it. The moral dilemma where, you know, in the episode he's forced to give it to his friend. As in the book, his friend gave it to him and then he has to give it to a rival of his that he's kind of become friends with and the rivals kind of become nice to him and become more of a friend to him so really i think when it comes to like the depth of luke and like how that's set up for luke um i think he gets a little more points here for me with the book i just think he has a more emotional roller coaster to go through I, I even like the ingenuity from the episode version, don't get me wrong. Luke has some good ingenuity, but he also has, like, a, a really bad actor that just kind of takes his character away from me I, a little bit. But the book, you know, you start out liking him, then you don't like him when he tries to, like, sabotage Hannah before he knows the truth. And then you kind of like him again be because he doesn't want to give the skull to stretch. I just think he has a more impactful story in the book, so I'm going to give Luke the edge to the book. Hannah, I'm just going to keep it simple. She's not in the episode, so I'm going to give it to the book. It really, Hannah's just a really good supporting character. Uh, she has her ups and downs, too, in the story. So, yeah, Hannah's a good character, but easily the book wins because she's not in the episode. Uh, Jeff, same thing. Jeff's not in the book, so I'm going to give it the edge of the episode. Jeff's hilarious. Jeff is so funny. If I had to pick a best friend choice, honestly, even though I like how Hannah is involved in the story with the overall plot in the book jeff's hilarious i mean come on jeff just speaks to me he's he's just a funny kid he has some wit to him honestly like if they were to make a spinoff episode with like jeff as a lead character i'd be all for that jeff's funny 
Um, but uh, I guess if I had to compare them both, I guess I would prefer Hannah because she she's a part of how this book is so good. But Jeff's so great. Honestly, I might just deadlock him, actually. Deadlock him. Love them both. Um, I guess we can go to Stretch. He's not in the episode, so I'll give the edge to the book here. Stretch, he has a, a, a little character arc. Even for a bully. A character arc for a bully. Wow. Uh, this book did, did that. Really impressed. Like Stretch. Gomez. Just an airhead bully uh, in the episode. So I guess we'll talk about Gomez. Uh, Gomez gets the edge because he's not in the book, but Gomez kind of sucks, so, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, let's get into the, uh, I guess the, you know, we don't have to talk about the teachers, really, really, we don't have to talk. But we can talk about the Fate Master. The Fate Master had the guy from the, the Phantasm movies playing him in the episode, and in the book, he's a lot more sinister, he's a lot more head game he's a lot more, uh, this role and he he's not afraid to mess some kids up he's not uh in the episode he's he has that one bathroom scene and that's really all i have to ride home about him even though the actor did a great job i'm still gonna have to give the edge to the fate master in the book fate master is just better here i mean it's better realized villain and i i'm thankful i didn't spoil all most of the good scenes in the book uh dealing with his character because they're good really good stuff right so that's pretty much why i'll leave it with the characters that's really all i'm gonna discuss here um let's get into the atmosphere i don't even think this is a con a contest really i'm gonna have to give it to the book the book just has more scenery changes you have basketball you, you have things going on outside you have things going on in his house you know dealing with animation working on animation um there's a little camp out setting there. It just, it, it goes into multiple places, which I always love in a book. Just don't keep it in one place. The episode, it was home and school, kind of small scale. And maybe a, a little gym for a wrestling match, one or two parts of the episode. So yeah, it, it just, the episode reflects his budget with the atmosphere. If you want to tie it into the superstition angle here, which one has a better superstition atmosphere? Um... I guess I'll deadlock them because the superstition angle is still there and it's kind of interesting in the episode even though it's done haphazardly but that vibe is throughout you know I, I can't discredit it the book does it to kind of explore some characters and some morals actually you know I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the tie back I'm gonna give it to the book I think the book just does it a little better um, it uses the superstition angle to explore the characters put them in moral dilemmas um, kind of explore what is deemed right and wrong it's a thought-provoking uh, book in the process from doing that so yeah take back the time i'm gonna give the edge to the book there even for the superstition atmosphere now let's get into i guess aesthetics we have a couple of things here the charm the charm in the uh, episode is like some dollar tree charm and in the book it's like a yellow skull with red eyes um yeah, I guess, um, I guess the skull was used creepier here. The episode just, yeah, I don't even, <laughs> there's really nothing to write home about. The skull was used to, to kind of facilitate more scarier scenes. So I'm going to give the edge, the aesthetics for the, the charm to the book. Um, the locker kind of operates a little bit differently. There's like black cats in the book and all that but in the episode, I think there's a, a more sinister presence to the locker. You can kind of feel that the locker is more tied to the Fate Master than the book lets off. Uh, it's kind of implied in the book, but the episode kind of states that. So actually, I'm going to give the edge to the episode here for the aesthetics of the locker. Um, yeah, really creepy. It's, it's creepy in the episode. I'm actually really impressed by how creepy they made the locker appear in the um, in the episode and i guess the sports i guess if you want to call that the sports and hobbies in the episode he's just a superstition nut fanatic neurotic kid with a wrestling hobby and in the book he's like an artist he loves basketball he loves swimming 
he has obviously more layers to him in the book. So, with like sports and hobbies, it's going to the book. Okay. Overall plot, this is not even a contest. Again, it's going to the book. I mean, good lord, the, the episode's plot is jumbled. It's The pace is off. Uh, some of the dialogue is bad. What happens in the story just happens so quickly. Everything feels so skimmed. It's it's okay. I do I do though. I do appreciate the change made to streamline the episode, where the pendant keeps taking away energy from Luke. I like that. I like that utilization, and I can kind of understand why they chose that. But this is just a great plot. This is a very an emotional plot. Like I said, you, you root for characters, then you root against them, then you root back for them. You see characters evolve. There's more depth going on with the characters. It, this is more of a character exploration book, if I had anything else to say. And plus, there's a lot of scary scenes in this book. There's like a concussion scene that's really, really good. Um, it's kind of bloody. It's kind of gruesome. Very head gamey from the Fate Master when he's involved. And by the end, it, it's a way better resolution. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but... Yeah, just overall plot, I have to give it to the book here. It's great. Um, and I guess we'll kind of feed into the climax here. The climax is a bit different. Um, in the episode, he looks... Uh, he gets this idea after being defeated uh, from giving the charm to his best friend. He gets this idea in his science class that may or may not be able to defeat the Fate Master. As in the book the climax really comes down to uh luke's trials of th of his three goals of the year to try to figure out what skills he really has that can prove that he doesn't need luck and uh there's like three separate climaxes here i guess leading up to the final climax where he's at the uh pool so when it comes to climaxes um i guess they all kind of work but i really like the final climax in the book because it's kind of it's kind of cool actually um it's a lot more i don't know off the rails so in that light i will give the edge to uh the book for the climax now the overall ending okay i'm not gonna lie i, I i'm kind of blown away by how just man both endings kind of are here in the episode their sequel bait after uh, it was hinted that this plan of Luke's could potentially make the Fate Master kill himself. And I really don't understand the ending still. And the book, it feels like an ending that Arl Stein wrote before he wrote the rest of the book. And the ending kind of comes off like a mild wet fart. <laughs> it's just like, okay, because how the book wraps up, what led to this? Why? How did they come to this conclusion? And it, it all stems from how to tie together the skull, the locker, the black cat, how Hannah got the skull in the first place. What what exactly, I mean, you have to dig through context with the ending here. And at least in the book, I mean, at least in the episode, they kind of foreshadowed this beforehand. I really don't know. I think I'm going to put them deadlocked here because they're both just kind of whatever to me on like pretty much the same level. I can't really decide which one's worse or which one's better. Someone's going to tie them here. Um, even though I guess some people might argue the book's ending is better because uh, I guess the choice that Luke made to do. Other than that, eh. So, yeah. So, if you can't tell, this was kind of a runaway uh, they tied on a few things. I think the episode went out on like maybe one thing. But if I had to give the edge to anything, it's going to the book. The book is way superior for Locker 13. And I'm, I'm going to even go out of my way to say this. I know The Nightmare Room's a book franchise. You should read the book and then watch the episode. But this is one of the fair times where this blows the episode out of the water. Really, you should just read the book. <laughs> you do not need to watch this episode. There's really no need to watch it. Unless you're maybe a fan of the Phantasm movies. Maybe you're a fan of Keenan and Kel and want to watch the coach in the episode. Maybe you like the kid from um, Leave it to Beaver and Jingle All the Way. Like the supporting kid. Maybe you're a fan of him. Or maybe you're just curious about Jeff because Jeff's actually fun and funny. 
Um, <laughs> or maybe you just want to see the bathroom scene. Go ahead. Watch it for those. Uh, don't watch it for anything else. Maybe maybe if you've watched every single Goosebumps episode, every single Are You Afraid of the Dark episode, and you haven't touched Nightmare Room, I guess then watch it as well. But don't go out of your way to watch it. It's not worth it. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Locker 13, book versus episode. Let me know down in the comment section which one do you find superior. Do you find the book or the episode superior? I'm dying to know, and I'll see you next time.